Hey everyone, welcome to the Oasis Podcast. I'm your host, Miss AJ. Thanks for tuning in. An oasis is something that provides refuge, relief, or pleasant contrast, and that is exactly what you can find tuning into the Oasis Podcast. This will be a space where I and special guests will be cultivating intentional and honest conversations about life's journey. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe now. Also follow us on Instagram at the Oasis Podcast. That's T-H-E-O-A-S-I-S Podcast. Welcome back to the Oasis Podcast. Thank you everyone for joining us again. Today I have with me Miss Lovely Patty. Hi, Patty. Hi. <laughs> if everyone, those of you who haven't yet listened to episode 30 of last season, Miss Patty was on there with me with a, a sister to sister where we were talking about letting go in peace. Okay. A lot of people really love that episode because, you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> there's some gems dropped in there. Uh, it was a great episode. And of course, I had to have you back. So thank you for coming back. Well, thank you for having me back. <laughs> <laughs> so today, you know, child, let me, before I even start, how you been? I've been good. Um, I've, like you, like I've just been behind the scenes just working and, you know, just trying to capitalize on uh, this pandemic, so to speak, you know, try to um, gather my thoughts, figure out what the next steps are. Um, you know, and just what are the takeaway points from, you know, being quarantined for those three, four months. So, yeah. Yeah. How, how many, has it only been three, four months? Yeah. Cause I mean, let me see. Girl. Well, well, technically they said that we are, we are reopened. Oh, true. You're right. You know, but I mean, it still feels like we're locked down. I mean, nothing yeah. is really open. Life is definitely not normal. It used to be, but that could be a good or bad thing, right? Dive yeah. right into the topic. Uh, <laughs> talking about, we're talking about COVID revelations, right? So these past few months that we have been locked down, right? We have been inside yeah. the house for those of us who have been, I guess, lucky enough, I guess, depending on how you see it, lucky been able to work from home, able to be in the home. Um, you have a lot of time with yourself. I know for me, I've had a lot of revelations. I don't know if <laughs> you've shared some, uh, some revelations, uh, but a lot has happened. Uh, let's just talk about 2020 period. A lot have ha- has happened just this year. And but prior to us starting, you know, the recording, we were talking about our lovely <laughs> Black Panther King. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what kind of L he passed away, Chadwick. <sighs> that makes me really sad. Like it made me really, really sad last night. My brother shared it in the group family chat and I was just like, I didn't need that to the to, to before the end of the night. Like I it really made me sad. <laughs> like, I really something about it. Like I, I just, you know, I shot a prayer out for him, but something about seeing a superhero, seeing a king, a black character. Yes. I love superheroes. I love Marvel. That seeing that movie brought me so much freaking joy. Knowing that I took my nephews, they're watching it, seeing it. It just felt good. And knowing that he passed away, granted he was playing a character, but he was still very much so a real human being. Yeah. It was just sad. He was so young. I mean, you know, I have a confession to make. I saw that movie three times in the theater. The first time I went on a date by myself, I got real sexy and cute. The knee boots, you swear I I had a man. Like I went all out, went, bought a ticket, went, sat down, watched it. I think I even boohooed a few times in the movie too. Like, oh my goodness. It just felt so just real. Like it was just authentic. I mean, just from him on down to um, Lupita Nyong'o and the other, uh, Angela Bassett, the other characters. Oh my God, I loved every ounce of it. And I took my girls to see it the second time. And then I went with a girlfriend the third time. And people would say, you know, you really went to the, you really supported this movie three times. Yes, I did. It was a black film and I wanted to make sure it stayed in the number one uh, spot on the box office. So yes. Yeah. All about supporting black, anything black. It was such an amazing movie. 
he was such a great actor in the movie. There was tons of great actors, but since you know we're focusing on him right now and his life and what he left yeah. us with, to know that he was giving us all this content and all this stuff while he was silently suffering. Yeah. Woo, that hit my spirit in a way. Like last night, I really, I feel like I, I really did tear up for him. I didn't know him, but it was just to know that he was so young and he's taken from us, but he was just so gifted and he was talented, but he sacrificed himself for us, if you think about it, right? For for his passion, for his love. And it's like, wow, that's level of dedication. Yeah, yeah I, I'm I'm not gonna lie to you. I was taking a little cat nap and I woke up at about one in the morning and that's the first thing I saw on my Facebook timeline. And I started to well up with tears. I was like, this cannot be real. And mm -hmm. when I went to my Instagram, when I saw how it was just flooded, RIP Chadwick Boseman, yeah. Wakanda forever, everybody was putting up the Wakanda sign. I just, I, I, I couldn't sleep. I did not sleep well last night and I'm not the celebrity gawking type. I, I'm not stir crazy for celebrities. In my mind, they're humans just like us. But this one, this one hurt me a little bit just a little bit too much than I expected. I, I didn't go to bed until about five o'clock this morning. I could not, it was just an unrest in my soul. I, I said, you know, we lost a great one. Heaven gained a great one, but in the earth, we, lo we definitely lost a great man. And just to know that even though he was struggling with uh, colon cancer, the fact that, you know, St. Jude was putting up, um, pictures of him going to visit children that also had childhood cancer. And in spite of his sickness, he was still serving up his gift and giving us the best of what he had. And he was dedicated. I just, I took that as a lesson and as motivation and inspiration that nothing is promised, which is what COVID, that's one of my revelations. Nothing is promised, you know, but while you're here, like you owe it to everyone. Like there will never be another Chadwick Boseman. We may have plenty of other black actors, but there will there will be only one him. And with us as a people, there will only be one AJ. There will only be one Patty. Like how are you serving up your gift? You know, and at least he can, uh, you know, rest in peace knowing that he died empty. He left nothing on the table. He gave us his all he gave us everything he had and I mean it is a bittersweet moment like it really is but wow I'm definitely going to be watching a few of his movies throughout Me this entire too. weekend I am too I already told myself that it's going down um I but I, I went to the same place you went last night like at first I was sad you know like I said I prayed for him I really prayed that his ancestors received him with wide arms you know open arms and okay. then I thought about like you know, purpose and thought about so much has happened this year because my brother was bringing up, oh, you know, we lost Kobe and this and this. And 2020 has been a hell of a fucking year, right? I mean, can we can we throw the whole year away just in the trash? You know. Can we fast forward to 2021 already? Like, <laughs> you know, like part of me, I agree. And then part of me is like, 2020 has been also good, you know? And I That's think, too, yes. Right, I think that, the bad for a lot of people has definitely outweighed the good. But for me, I really try to come I more, especially more recently becoming trying to come from a space of gratitude of seeing what I've gained this year. I've lost, but then I've gained so much. And so I'm like, I would not redo 2020 if I had a choice, but <laughs> <laughs> while I'm here and I'm grateful to be here, and I'm riding out the rest of this year, I'm still looking forward to finishing it out. You know, I'm still looking forward to what is to come. And I, cause I feel, I really feel that there's so much more to come and not just bad. Cause Lord, we lost child. We, this year Lord, has been a doozy, but I also feel this good, some more good supposed to come. Like, you know, and maybe not on this grand scale level that everyone is expecting, but on these individual levels, I know for yeah. me, I don't know for you, but people, around me just are experiencing joy and, and, and experiencing growth and experiencing just different. And I think we need to hold on to those things and not look at the negatives that's been happening. So it's going to dive in right into the topic. We're talking about COVID revelations. 
and I guess it could be easily called 2020 revelations, but uh, COVID revelations because we've been kind of confined to our four walls. I mean, depending. Uh, oh. <laughs> depending. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but really during these past few months of um, being or having to be inside, kind of what you've experienced, what you've learned, and what you want to hold on to uh, once this terrible as year is done. <laughs> so I just want to piggyback off of the Chadwick Boseman. I'm going to jump right on in. So what came to me this week was a loss isn't exactly a loss if you gain something from it, right? Mm -hmm. So some people may have lost lives. Some people may have lost money, whether it be in the stock market or, you yeah. know, through work. But again, like if you can come away from that experience gaining something, like it, like in this man losing his life, I, I gained perspective on, okay, I need to play full out with my life like he did. So if I know what my purpose is, if I know, um, if I know what it is that I'm supposed to be doing with work, with love, with my friendships, just being more intentional, then I've actually gained more than actually what was lost. So that's one thing. Um, as far as, yeah, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I think no. while you're talking, part of me is just like, maybe we should do it like this. Let's talk about the things that we have lost. Okay. Let's talk about that. Um, and not necessarily has to be in, in full detail, but like we can talk about the things we've lost and then talk about what we gained from the losses, you know? Yeah. Um, and then go into like the lessons learned. Um, so if you feel comfortable, you can dive in to the things yeah. that you felt that you've lost thus far. Um, well, I've lost quite a few friends because I see that this pandemic has brought out the best and the worst in people. Um, a lot of people in particular have not taken um, COVID-19 very seriously. So you will still see people not wearing masks outside. You will see people, um, you know, just kind of all over the place, still traveling with no regard to anyone else. Um, they would tell you don't go to the hospital, but because you have a rash on your arm, you still want to go to the hospital. You still want to hang out and congregate in backyard parties. And make no mistake, I'm not coming for anybody on this platform. I'm just saying, like, you know, like the Budweiser commercial, if you're going to drink, drink responsibly. Mm -hmm. In this day and age, like if we're going to live, if we're going to go out, if we're going to engage people, do it responsibly. You know, like you and I have gone out a few times and have enjoyed the experience of outdoor dining, but we had our mask on. Now people would say, oh, well, but you had to take your mask off at some point to eat and drink. That is true. Mm -hmm. While we were eating and drinking, yes, it is difficult to, to eat under or on top of a mask. We tried and we were just like, okay, forget this. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we were done, you know, engaging with the food, what happened? Our mask went right back on or we went to a secluded area where it was just you and I just like just talking and just chopping it up. And I feel, you know, there are some people, friends in particular, they, they wanted to quarantine together. And I'm like, um, no, because even though I love you, you've been all over the street. Um, you're not wearing a mask. Your kid isn't wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. Your your kid has medical issues. So you really shouldn't have your child in the street. And then again, you're coming from all these places. And my my house, aka my sanctuary, is already cleaned. It's already sterile. And I know I can control what's going on in this atmosphere with me and my kids. And now I'm introducing you. I'm putting my my health as well as theirs at risk because you want to come over and hang out. That to me is reckless, yeah. especially at the beginning of the pandemic when even the government, quote unquote, did not know what this thing was. None of us knew what it was. That was not the time to still be social. That was the time, you know, as the Bible would say, there's a time to em embrace and the time to refrain. Like that was the time to refrain and to pull back from everybody. Like, it was hard not being able to see you. Like, you was like, girl, I love you, but we ain't hanging out till this thing is over. And I respected that because I got kids. 
but it was kind of understood <laughs> between us, right? So yes. you know, it wasn't like we didn't even press each other. It was just like no. We're not in these <laughs> like, <laughs> like, listen, we and one then, of us might got cooties. We don't know. <laughs> okay, and we understood that. So I guess to add on to what you're saying, you said you lost friendships. I can't honestly say I lost friendships. Um because my circle is very tiny to be in. But uh <laughs> I would say I lost, I felt I lost the sense of freedom, you know, because yeah. I'm a, I'm a, uh, people wouldn't believe this. I have a whole ass podcast, but I tend to be introverted and I tend to be a homebody, but I like it when I'm choosing to do that. <laughs> yes. Yes. And now when I have to, cause that child, that first month I was like, I right, got this. The second month I was like, I, right. the third month I was just like, <laughs> I'm gonna go outside. I'm gonna go outside. I, I, I'm gonna go outside. Like, um, and to me, I felt I lost my freedom, feeling like I couldn't do things, and it kind of, it spiked my anxiety. It really did. It spiked oh, my wow. anxiety with okay, even when I did go outside, I had a fear, like oh, what if I get sick? I gotta make sure I'm good. I live alone. If I get sick, I'm gonna die here by myself. Like, it was just like, so I felt like I lost a sense of freedom. I don't feel like I lost people per se. Um, I think people got a little more distant. But I think this time made people do that. You know, I don't think it was yes. intentional. I don't think it was on purpose. I think people folded into themselves. And I think that's okay. You know, I think that was okay, especially now. Like, you don't have these distractions no more. So you had to, you had to fold into yourself to figure, figure out what you're doing. And not to go a little crazy, I think, too. Yeah. I, I'm not going to lie. Um, we mentioned it at the top of this conversation. I am a Marvel gal. I love DC comics. I love action movies. And I mean, you know, piggybacking off of what you said, I definitely miss just randomly getting up, getting cute, getting dressed by myself. Cause I even had to learn that to go by myself, go watch a movie on a Saturday night. Everybody might be booed up. I didn't really care. I just wanted to go out and watch a movie and just not having that option to do that anymore it hurt me a little bit because I was like, I love the movies. I love the rotten popcorn <laughs> and the questionable soda and candy. Like it's all an experience, you know, and then you go home and then you think about the takeaway points after the movie. I miss that. I miss bowling. I wanted to do rock climbing. I wanted to do belly dancing, pole dancing. I had a whole laundry list of, okay, 2020 is coming in. I'm going to be trying all these different things. And then COVID came and I was just like, well, there goes my list. Um, yeah, 2020 was like, um, just, <laughs> 2020 was like wet. <laughs> like, <laughs> so that was that, um, you know. Well, yeah, so I lost, I felt like I lost freedom but I gained myself, you know? So it's like, I, I gained myself, I gained myself in a lot of different ways. And I think almost all the losses are going to, I'm going to go back to gaining myself. But the way I gained myself was, I, I felt I lost freedom in the sense of being able to get up, like what you said, get up and go. But I gained myself in the sense that I, I reintroduced myself to enjoying my own company and not feeling forced to enjoy my company, but like really, really enjoying it and coming to peace with it. You know, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I just want to speak to that as well. Um, I was also um, talking to a girlfriend a while back and um Again, back to the movie. She was like, you go to the movies by yourself? Like, how do you do that? You don't feel lonely? And I was like, um, girl, no. So I pretty much said to her, I said, um, you know, I like those kinds of things because think about it, right? Especially like when it comes to dating or friendships or coworkers, whoever it is that you're dealing with people wise. If you think you're a dope individual and you want people to understand that, then how are you going to convey that if you don't know for yourself? Like, how are you going to bring that across if you haven't spent time with yourself? If you haven't taken that time to discover you, discover what you like, what you don't like? I'm telling you, I, the fact. I got stories upon stories. 
<laughs> with quarantine, like figuring out what I like, what I don't like, All my pet peeve. Story time. <laughs> right. right. So, I mean, so, okay, so I'm going to just dive right in there. I, I decided I wanted to start dating during the quarantine. Really? I, I don't know why I thought that was a good I idea. I thought that too for a hot ass minute. <laughs> a hot minute. Uh, I, I don't know why. I, I think I, I think I had started to get up enough courage and I felt like I had kind of healed from past wounds. I was like, okay, maybe this will be a good time. And let's just say, ah, uh, dating during quarantine was like going through a landfill, Woo! like trying to find Buy stuff stupid. that wasn't actually that. Yeah, <laughs> straight trash. You know, because <laughs> people, people really didn't want you. They just want something to do. <laughs> that is that is so, trying to weave through that uh, was which is yeah. annoying. annoying. So I got a quick story for you. So I met this one guy on a dating app. He was fine, you know, light skin, low haircut, Jamaican. I was like, yes, okay, the stars are aligning. Just what I like. <laughs> And then he was just like, oh, so um, uh, am I coming to your house? Oops, wait, stop. No, 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 no. He's like, oh, well, there's nowhere to go. He's like, so do you want to come to my house? Walk. You know? And I was just like, I mean, need, needless to say, I did go to his house. It, and, I, you know, I did that because, one, at the time there was technically nowhere to go it was like in the middle of april it's still kind of cold um two i'm one of those women i need to see how you live so if your place is dirty yeah i'm gonna get real jamaican for a second your place dirty minimal yeah okay um i need to see how you live do you keep a clean space um do you have a girl there so i look for paraphernalia yes i'm giving away game if these men are listening <laughs> Like, I look for paraphernalia. I, I want to know if you live alone, if you live with mommy and daddy. Like, what's your whole setup? Um, because that's the way how I'm able to gauge if you're good for me or not. I, I'm collecting data before I collect the body. Hello. Mm -hmm. um, so needless to say, you know, I met up with him, but he was, I, I could tell from his actions that it was just clear that he just wanted me to sell my cookies on, on, the, on the first time of seeing me. And I was just like, yeah, this is not going to work. Mm -hmm. And then I met another guy afterwards, like a month or two later. I was like, this is not going to work. I met another guy. It was like, I think I spoke to you about this guy. This guy was Puerto Rican. He was from the Bronx. Mm -hmm. He was also fine. So I said, okay, we're doing great here. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but it was, again, it was like pulling teeth to finally get him on a date. I, I should have taken that as a red flag, but it was a bit nicer. So now it's about June, July ish. He finally comes outside. We meet up. We, again, so at this time, you know, like pizza stores were open, like little restaurants here and there. Mm -hmm. That's when they started with the outdoor dining and we bought drinks and we talked and we just walked around on the promenade, enjoyed the view nice guy but that went awry because he just felt like okay so we went out on that one date now i should be cooking you home cooked meals wait 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 effort like y'all asking for a little too much and you were low energy at the door like hello i'll cook meals for you if i feel like your hands call for that did you bring me flowers did you offer to take me on another day did you were you following up with good morning texas how yeah. are you did you eat but you off top want me to do something for you do you know what i about just on that point of cooking i, I want to throw out there since we throwing <sighs> out shit cooking is a labor of love yes like it takes energy it takes just for your food to be come out a certain way you have to pour love into it that's how i yes. see it right yes and for people to think that you should just be haphazardly just cooking these food. No. And then I always say, not always say, let me rephrase that. I, I heard this a while back and now I say it for these dudes who be thinking that you just supposed to be, oh, cook me, cook me, cook me, something. I said dudes who like to eat got to like to buy groceries. Okay. I'm pouring in love and effort and energy. What you giving? You just going to show up and eat? No. 
Yes, I which is what he wanted to do to me. So a lot of times, exactly. And I'll, I'll only throw that out to people who be thinking, oh, you cook, you got your own place. Oh yeah, you cooking for me? It's like automatically they think that it, that, that two, two and two go together. So I throw it at them. Oh yeah, you. I, no, I don't know you first of all. But secondly, uh, yeah, if you like to eat, you like you have to like to buy groceries. And you know what? Quick fast. They, they changed their motherfucking tune. Okay. So you, you thought this was going to be a one-sided interaction. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> a dude was really about it. He was like, yeah, all right. What you want me to bring? Or what you want to make? And, and they'll do that. And that shows you right there. There's effort and energy. Like you're trying to give um, effort and energy because you want to receive it. Got you. I'll fuck with that. I had one do that yet. I mean, now, now let's step it up next level, you know, for these men, right? Here's my thing. You know what would be even more romantic, right? Again, it's not what you're asking for, but it's how you're going about it, right? So you, so you want to come to a woman's house, right? And you want her to cook. How about you buy the groceries? Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying to stock her whole cupboard. Like if you're, if, if, if you, right. If you're dealing with a woman that has her own and she's independent, just Say, all right, so what's on the menu? You guys sit down, create a menu, whatever. It could be a, a, a simple chicken breast, a salad, some rice. Okay, you bring small little stuff. About, that's about $20 worth of groceries. And then after you come, how about you sit in the kitchen and y'all make a meal together? Because now... You'll be thinking. Right, you see what I'm saying? Because now, at that point in time, now we can see how we both carry on in real time can we work together as a team can we mesh can we be compatible and i feel like with men and also with some women too because some women out here got us looking crazy in these streets with the stuff that they be doing Mm -hmm. i'm not gonna say the ladies are innocent it's everybody i feel like we're losing that that lack of effort and that lack of energy I mean, now, if you coming at me like that, like, oh, I'm going to help you cook a meal. Let me show you how to make this chicken. You can make the rice. And like, okay, like now we can kind of gauge and see, okay, are we compatible? Does this work? Oh, can he cook? Was he just like faking me out? Like, get to talk. So my whole thing is like quarantine. People really could have made that some romantic joint, candlelit exactly. dinners. Oh my god, that was the time to be creative and thoughtful, exactly. which is what I put out there. You That's have- what I want in a man. I do it. I do it for my girls. Candlelit dinners. About having to spend so much money on dates. This was a time you could have really, on some real shit, got to know somebody with zero dollars. Absolutely. Like, for real. And the thing is, it's like y'all just don't want to put effort. At the end of the day. That's the bottom line because you easily could have made it. Uh, you guys could have taken a walk in the park, and it, she wouldn't think that you was bu- like a bum nigga and didn't have money. It would have been like that's all we could do. But you still exactly. would have gotten to know somebody. You could have had a picnic. You and I have done that. We went, yes. what our food, our drinks. We went to a park. We, we social distance. We that had a- was so fun. Brooklyn Bridge Park. We had that nice little vo- that nice little view. Oh. I and loved it. Did that, and even if the stores weren't open, all right, each of y'all cook something, make something, right, and then yeah. bring it. How how expensive was that? Barely any money. Like, there's so many things that could have been done. You could have done a freaking a Zoom date. Yeah. You stay in your house. I stay in mine. Drink wine. You could have watched movies together. You got a Netflix party, right? There's yeah. so many things you could people could have done to be creative. But pe- you know what people want to do? Oh, there's nothing to do. Oh, 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 and the only thing they can think about. Oh, come over. No, that's not how it's going to work. You know, there's not even more excuse to Netflix and chill. Like, what the hell? Like, people are just like, they're just low effort. And that's just what it boils down to. And I learned that as well. Yeah. Because I lost a boyfriend, well, a little bit prior to COVID. But I I ain't gained nothing else. I lost the boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? Let me, let me rephrase that. I, I gained the insight that... <laughs> I gained the insight that, yeah, you know what? I think I need to sit my ass down and, and just really just enjoy me and the people around me. And not even just me, because actually this quarantine time made me enjoy the people in my life even more. Like being able to, to chop it up with you and hang out with you. I enjoyed those times yeah. so much more than I would have before. Like before, Yes, it was still fun before. It was still all that, but this time it was just like we don't get to do this often. We got to make the <laughs> best. <of this. laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? When I tell you, prior to COVID, my ass was in my bed by ten o'clock. You lucky if I hit ten thirty, if I was still up in bed, 
like that was just my routine chat i was up and out till five in the morning with people like really out here and yeah. people just never I, listen, I'm, <laughs> I'm over that. Like, I just even when i was young i was too old okay i was just like look i ain't with it but i loved being out with people chopping it up just me and people and talking it felt so good and honestly it felt like how we used to feel when we were younger, when we used to sit on the stoop, right? Yeah. When you were popping it up with your neighbors, when you would just, you just thought that at that point in life, you had so much life in front of you. You had, some of it was just this amazing time. That's what it, it, it felt like. Yeah. Being able to interact with people. So being able to do that, I started enjoying being in the house more. Um, but I really loved interacting with the people um, that have been in my life though. So and I took it, I took out the, the, the romantic part of it. Right. At first I was yes. thinking, Oh, that's how I needed to connect. And I was just like, nah, I got all these dope ass fucking people around me. I don't need to connect with some dude. I'll connect with them whenever that happens, but let me connect with the people who've been here prior to COVID, but who are still here despite COVID, you yeah. know? Yeah. Well, I mean, just jumping into that. I mean, I know I, I mentioned, you know, losing some friends during the pandemic, but I'm not going to lie. I think I've gained intimacy mm -hmm. with a few of you, you know, so yeah. I've gained one or two friends. A few people have come around like when things were happening to me and, and on my day to day. And I, like I gained like an extra level on, on, on the friendship already. So like zero is like the baseline. And I feel like I went up a few levels like with you, um, with a few other people, because now there was nothing else to do but to actually be intentional and really look at my relationships and say, okay, who am I going to delve deeper into and, and get to know them on another level during quarantine? You know, because I mean, even though we couldn't go out, we were just like, hey, girl, you free to chat? Yeah, yeah, I'm free to chat. Exactly. I finish at four o'clock. All right, cool. I finish at five. And I we was would just not have a person. A glass of wine and zoom in. Like, I was not a person I like to be on the phone mad long. Like, what's in the blue? But chat, now we be. Yeah, because like, I think the last time I did that, oh my goodness, I'd have to say I was like 22 years old, like on the phone, you know, I call it phone boning or jonesing, them late hours of the night. Like, I haven't done that in such a long time. And I find now during this quarantine, I'm over here having music battles with people two, in the, <laughs> two three in the morning, like, nah, Brandy's better. No, Monica's better, which that's coming up, I think, Monday, yeah, right? It's I can't no. wait. <laughs> no, no. Kenny Lattimore is better. No, no, no. I like Chris Brown better. Nah, Neil's better. Nah, I like Genuine. So it's like going back and forth, like actually getting to, to my whole thing is like, I was more intentional because of the, the yeah. loss of life that was going on. Yeah. So now I was, I was more intentional about checking in with you, checking in with my other friends, checking in with my sister, checking in with my brothers, FaceTiming my brothers and my sisters more. FaceTime and my nephews and my nieces, you know, so I've really gained, you know, a sense of intimacy with family, with friends. And I'm just going to jump into another lesson. Like I learned, you know, I, like I was focused on a relationship for a minute, want to be booed up and loved down and all this other stuff. And I realized the only way, so I thought there was a difference between that and friends and family. And I realized it's all the same. You date your friends, you date your family, you date that man or that woman, whatever you into. Like, it, you're constantly dating people. You're constantly getting to know people because we change. Mm -hmm. You might, t you know, AJ, you might like um, the color pink today. And then I may come back at you another six months and you might say, well, I actually like gold now. And I'm like, dang, well, you know, we first met, you know, she says you like pink. All right. She like gold now. Okay. So I just mental note. All right, AJ likes go. All right, cool. If you, you know. not, but the thing is, if you're not growing to me, it's you're dead. You should be. Yes. You should not be the same person you was last year. You should not even be the same person you was six months ago. You know what I mean? Like there should be things about you that is different, and I think there should be core things about you that should stay the same, of course. But I think you should be changing. You should be growing, right? Um, and I think a lot of people who like they they take pride and hold it on to. I've been the same since day one. It's like, but is that okay? That's bad, right? Like you the same person. You <laughs> I don't know, but like, ten years ago I was a hot fucking mess. So you was a hot fucking mess. You the same person? Nah, nah, I can't. I can't fuck with it. But 
to add on to you, what you said, I lost, you no, know, definitely gained a lot of intimacy for sure. But I feel like for COVID, though I know I mentioned prior, I would, like at first I was scared and I had a lot of anxiety. But as things started moving, I lost fear. I lost a lot of fear. Um, fear in a lot of things. Fear in being alone. Fear in yes. um, moving and, and, and pushing myself and my podcast and my business forward. Um, fear in not finding, you know, my tribe and not finding the person I'm supposed to be with. Um, Girl, you preaching. You lucky I don't have a dollar. Fear in just not being able to connect with people in the way that I want to connect with them. And I, I lost all those. I came into it with it, not even realized it was that heavy until COVID really hit. And throughout going through COVID, I lost those fears. And I've gained, I've gained creativity because now y'all see us as, as opposed to hearing us, right? I've gained just, but just, it took a lot for me to even want to do this, to be on camera because being on camera was not a thing that I, that I felt I can do for whatever of reasons. So I gained that. I've gained, you know, a therapist because I need a sis. I need it. Oh, okay. I gained a, th I gained a therapist to really walk me through a lot of things. And I've gained a sense of love. I've gained a new sense of love and excitement for life. Like I take so much, I, I gained just so much joy now when I can record a podcast episode. I can chat with somebody. I can watch something I haven't watched in a long time. And that shit was funny. I, I gained so much joy and to the point where I would sit down and be like, I start crying. Like, that was amazing. And I'm not even a crier. Like, I cry now when I experience something because we've lost so much as a society, right? Thank God I haven't really lost a lot of people or anything during this time but because I am like I'm just sensitive to people and what's going on I feel those things even if I haven't personally lost them and to be able to receive you know that grace and love from 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 God and whoever you believe in a higher being to allow you to be here and be able to laugh at some dumb shit right yes. be able to chat chop it up with your you know with your home girl like that brings me so much joy and I, it brings tears to my eyes because it's like, why, why me? Right. Like, why did it have to be me? It could have, it could have been anybody. Um, but it, it is me. And I take so much joy from that. Like it is me and I'm here and I'm going to, I'm going to do the damn thing while I'm here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's what I've lost. In, well, another thing I've lost in game. Well, I mean, uh, the next obvious thing that I think maybe some of us may have gained was, huh? saving a lot of money. Hello, staying home, working. Shout out to the people that work from home. Can we talk okay. about Can we? Okay. Okay. I like looking at my bank account now before it was a joke. It was about 25 cents in there, $2 to the next paycheck now, you know, Got a little couple of hundreds just sitting there. I'm like, oh, this is nice. I like looking at this. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, you know, yes, girl. you know, so I mean, like, I started at the top of the year. I, I've kind of been like, I mentioned it to you a few times where at the top of the year, I was like, okay, I need to get out of debt. And uh, this pandemic has definitely helped me to trim down a lot of bills. Let's just say when I first started, I owed 26 different people money. Mm -hmm. And where I am now during this pandemic, I'm at 11 accounts left. Okay. And that's including like, revolving expenses like rent, light, gas, Netflix. Okay. So that's about that's about seven different bills I have to pay every month. So technically I only have four debt accounts yeah, left. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so I mean, I'm just proud of that growth. Like I was just very intentional. I was like, hmm, I don't have to pay a kid's driver. I no longer have to pay for lunch outside. I'm working from home. Mm -hmm. I no longer have to pay for a Metro card. Hello, I'm in the house. I don't have to go shopping for clothes. I could work in my PJs. I, I So once I realized there was a lot of money to be saved and then, you know, I don't really care for him too much, but shout out to number 45 for that stimulus check that helped me too to get rid of some okay. debt. So I literally just used any opportunity possible to, um, you know, to, to get out of debt. And I mean, like, 
again, I know there are some people that they, they were not fortunate enough to have that experience, but um, I was. And I know quite a number of people who have, people that started investing in the stock market, you know, started opening savings accounts. So yeah, I definitely gained some money off of this thing. And I mean, I'm not even talking about launching a business. This is just my regular paycheck. So imagine for the entrepreneurs who have been able to capitalize off of this pandemic. Yep, that's girl saving a coin, baby. Girl, <laughs> I've been saving some coins. I ain't even gonna hold you. For a while, I was so afraid to spend money, and I was just spending shit. And then I started spending some money, but I, I'm still saving a lot of money, and that's because yeah, I could be home, and I don't have to be out in these streets and um, doing so much all the time. But no, talk about it. That that's a fact. That's a fact. I think. There's a level of financial freedom that was gained, though we lost being able to go outside how we want to. Yeah, we definitely gained being able to really pocket a lot of these extra coins. But just like what you said, there's some people, you know, they lost their jobs, right? Um, and they didn't really get that opportunity to feel what we're feeling. That's the part about everything that I think people don't think about, you know? Um, and that's another reason to be even more grateful right? That easily could have been any one of us, like, not working, yes. um, struggling, you know, hoping and praying and waiting for, uh, you know, uh, unemployment check. And I didn't take that lightly at all. You know, I know no. someone is looking out for me and my family in general. Like, I, I know this. And it's, that's another thing I think that was gained during this time. Like, when I tell you my sense of gratitude just jumped, like, jumped substantially substantially and the fact that when you you and I like hey girl I want to go outside me too <laughs> <laughs> and when you know places are open we can go you know what I'm saying we can go out here and do whatever and be like all right and feel okay about that you know that's yeah. a blessing that's a blessing you know what I'm saying yeah. that a lot of people didn't get to have it and and because of that and I, and I think about that and I've thought about that even while we're out and it makes me enjoy the moment so much more. You know what I mean? Like, yes. it's like, gosh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like that. I'm even able to do this, that I'm even like, this is something that, you know, that, that, that other people can't experience. And I'm able to do that. And girl, COVID hasn't been all bad for me. I mean, I can't, I can't, I'm not going to sit here and lie and try to make it seem like it has been. It really has not. It hasn't. I mean, I am outside of, the loss of human life in the beginning, you know, the human casualty, like outside of that, I can honestly sit here and say that COVID has been a blessing on so many different levels. Mm -hmm. um, I was, a as I said, I was able to spend more time with my kids, you know, really just like enjoy their company, just because think about it, most parents, you know, you drop your kids off at eight, nine o'clock, you're not retrieving them until six. So who is raising your children? Is it in our schools yeah. and after schools? And it's nothing against, you know, teachers and professionals because, I mean, I love all of my kids' teachers and after school staff. But again, it's just knowing that this is your legacy and you can actually pour into them at this mm -hmm. time. You know, mm -hmm. you can have those red table talks in your own house. And even if you don't have children, even if it's just with your family, like, I really felt like that was the time and the space that whoever you lived with, if you had bad blood with them, that was a time to make amends. Cause hello, we were all stuck in the house together. We going, we going to figure this out one way or the other. Like <laughs> I tell you how grateful I was that this breakup happened before the shut out, the shut in child. <laughs> ah, I'd have lost my shit. I'd have lost my shit. And that's something else I think about. Like, can you imagine? Lord, I would not want to see you on Snap. I'd be like, ah, that's my friend. No. <laughs> you ain't like, want to see me on Snap. I'd have called you be like, Patty. <laughs> Patty, you you know, Patty, it done happened. <laughs> come, come help me with this. <laughs> Girl. Right? right? Ooh, child. I'm like, okay, I'm about to call somebody. Or even, not even be at home with my mama, because she would have made me crazy. See? Girl. <sighs> <laughs> no I really sat down and thought about these things like I really I really did I really did think about how great at first I was like set like kind of sad by it and it felt lonely and then I said whoa whoa time out 
you could have been in worse situation right now. Oh yeah. You could have been around people that you didn't care for. You could have been around people who are wasteful. You could have been around people who didn't care about their health and they didn't care about yours. You could have been around somebody who was beating your ass. You could have been around just, just, just so much. And you're not. Breathe and say thank you and move the fuck on. <laughs> like, I mean, like that Instagram post says, heavy on the thank you, God. I mean, that that was like my motto. Like, oh my I'm God. talking about even, you know, just being able to have food on the table. I mean, because again, I deal with clients every day that they're lacking something. So I got a quick story for you. Mm -hmm. Speaking of relationships, I called this one client. He claimed he needed assistance. So I called him and I said, hi, can I please speak to Mr. So-and-so? So I called from a restricted number. Um, so he hung up the phone, click. So I call back again. I was like, hi, good afternoon. You know, this is Miss such and such. And uh, I'm calling to speak to this person. So a woman picks up. Who are you? Are you the bitch from Walgreens? I told you stop calling my fucking man. Click. I said, oh, I said, oh, he got worse problems than him needing uh, assistance. <laughs> he he needs to deal with this woman at Walgreens plus his girl. <laughs> Because I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I don't have the problems I don't want them. You know? Me, myself, and I, we chilling. Chilling. All of us. <laughs> I was like, mm. Ooh, yeah. So, yeah. some other things. Like I said, I let go of fear. But I also, like, I really feel like I really have dived more into myself and my wants and my needs. So I know we talked about it briefly and people on podcasts are going to hear about this as well, yeah. but just me really diving into my fertility and going on my fertility journey. And it was something that was weighing on my mind. It had been, you know, in and out for, for years. And I finally decided what's stopping you. And I finally did it. And so I've started on the journey to figuring out what's good, what's not good, you know, um, visiting, um, or at least having seen, uh, what are they called? I, I was calling them the reproductive doctors and that's not what they're called. It's a reproductive, I call them fertility doctors. It's a reproductive <laughs> anthropologist. And so far, like, I'm happy that I've decided to take that dive. I'm happy that I've decided to take ownership of my own fertility you know what I mean um and not being concerned or scared about it and it's something I'm doing on my own time it's something that I'm doing for me and so that's something like I've started during COVID and you all are going to see some episodes pertaining to fertility and infertility and IVF with myself and other um other guests that I have coming up so definitely tune in to that but that's another thing that I've dived into and in getting to know myself and really talking to myself and figuring out what I want, how I want it, when I want it, um, and taking a lot more power and control over things that are for me and about me. Well, I mean, just to follow up with that statement, um, I started seeing a therapist. So. No, I love that. Know, so, you know. No, I love that. that. So that that's that's courtesy <laughs> that's courtesy of my homie friend. I wonder who <laughs> this, this lovely girlfriend I got. So she introduced me to this therapist, and um, I just felt that this was the time, you know, um, especially because I had been spending so much time alone um, during the quarantine, and I had been told this like three years ago <clears throat> when I first started going through um, the divorce that you should go see a shrink. And I was like, ah, yeah, go see a shrink. And then I started actively looking and then I got discouraged. And then I was just like, you know what? I've done a lot of the internal work. Like, like we spoke about on the, um, the last podcast, episode 30, let go in peace. So, I mean, I did a lot of the internal work, dealing with the hurt, dealing with, uh, the trauma, of that relationship plus other relationships that uh, got severed in the process. And I just felt like there was a next level of unpacking that needed to be done. Because I mean, we can do some of the work, but again, 
it's helpful when you have a good circle of friends around you and also a therapist where people can call you out on your patterns and your behaviors, some things you may not notice. So um, I needless to say, you know, I was, I was going in there, oh, I ain't going to be crying. You know, you know, real G's, we don't cry thug tears and, nah. you know, <laughs> Like, I was like, I ain't crying because ain't nobody going to have me crying. And no lie, like this pandemic just showed me that there are some relationships that even though I may not go back to them and repair them, that they still bother me Mm -hmm. because they they were broken Mm -hmm. um, and they've been broken for a long time. And it has also helped me as a mother that, okay, you know, your parents may have broken you whether it be on purpose or by accident in some areas, now for me to be mindful now that I have my own. So there's a lot more talking. There's a lot more engaging. I mean, I still will yell from time to time because if I'm telling you three, four, five, six times, stop doing the same thing. Yes, I'm going to yell the last time. You've seen me in action. You'd be like, oh, I ain't getting involved. <laughs> if, if, your, if, your, if your mommy going to spank you, I ain't even saying nothing. But I'll try to tell them, like, um, you already so you already talked to you. I think you should stop. <laughs> yep, yep. You know, because you might get the smackdown. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but um, but yeah, you know. So I mean, like, I find therapy has brought up some. Uh, so I'll talk about one thing. Um, so therapy has kind of highlighted for me that I have trust issues with folk. Um. And I and I thought I was a very, you know, trusting person, you know. I mean, I I thought I let people in maybe sometime a little too easily depending on the energy you gave me. And I discovered I don't. That's just one that's just one layer. It's kind of like Fort Knox where you got to go through a vault, then you got to go through a gate, then you got to go through a door. Like I I put people through things and I was like, "Oh, that's bad." I should not be doing that. But because I I um I have trusted people in the past, people in my family, friends, and pe- people, you know, have dropped me, so to speak. Um, I realize now when I approach people, I approach them like, okay, yeah, I trust you, but it's like, you know, like the iceberg, you know, just what you see on the top. I trust you, but there's a whole nother 90% of that iceberg that you don't see, the bigger part. That in my head, I'm like, I don't trust you, I don't trust you, I don't trust you, I don't trust you. I don't trust you. Mm, I don't know you. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about this one. Mm -hmm. So I discovered that. So I said, okay, that's something for me to work on, right? Going back to, you know, I'm going to go even deeper with it. It got to a point that I realized I didn't trust myself, which is why I couldn't trust people because I was like, okay, well, if I don't trust myself to make the right decision, then how can I trust them to make the right decision for me concerning me? So I'm grateful for therapy because it really has me looking at me on a whole nother level. And now I'm learning to trust that, 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 that gut, you know, that, that inner guidance that God gave to she, you know, female woman, like that he gave us. I mean, men have it too, but their own is slightly different, but our own is like spot on, on point. Every time, if you feel in a certain way about a man or about a person or about a situation, nine times out of 10, we are right. And I'm learning to trust that. Yeah. And even if I'm wrong, oh, fucking well, well, then I was wrong. Okay. And I'm not going to beat myself up over it. I'm just going to say, okay, all right. So okay. you, you messed up there. That was a learning experience. Well, we learned from that and we just keep pushing. So Girl, I'm over yeah. sitting here like a bobblehead. Just mm mm. <laughs> no, girl. My, I, I have an episode coming out later on in the season. Therapy is life, and it is the amount of life I felt being poured into me from therapy. Amazing. My therapist, she be just snatching all my edges. Just <laughs> snatching all my edges. <laughs> I'll be tell like I'll be talking to Patty sometimes afterwards, or we link up, and I just she'd be like, "Why you look like that? Why you sound like that? <laughs> you know why? <laughs> Therapy." <laughs> this girl, like, no, this woman, she she's amazing, and I honestly feel that 
this was divine intervention because I've talked about my therapy journey. I've talked about searching for a therapy most of last year. Couldn't find one therapist, excuse me, I couldn't find one trying to go back to my old one, but then she wasn't taking my insurance. It was just so many hoops that I was going through. And it just so happened during COVID time, I decided to reach back to my old therapist's office. I, and it, it just, and I got this particular therapist, this brand new person that I, I dreaded. I'm like, ooh, I don't want to talk to somebody new. But then I was like, all right, fine. From day one, sis was like, she's listening to me talk. She looked at me like this. <laughs> and I'm sitting here like, ah. this is what it is. This is what I need therapy for. So don't worry about it. Just support me. I just want to come and talk when I need. She said, she let me talk. She let me talk. She let me talk. She goes, nah, that ain't what we're going to be doing. <laughs> I said, oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm about to do like that gif. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh no, no. she really had me like mm-mm. <laughs> but she does it in such a loving way she does it she calls me out to call me in is what she likes to say and it's so amazing I always keep learning every session I keep learning even more about myself and that shit again I, I'll cry during session because she always got me crying and afterwards thinking about the things that we talked about and tying them into this and that I end up crying because, not because I'm like sad, not because I'm disappointed, but because I'm so happy that I, I'm it's like a release, isn't it? Yeah. Like I'm getting yeah. to the point and I'm actually growing and I'm, I'm actually moving because for a while, again, if you listen to the podcast, I was saying I feel kind of black. I was feeling like in this blast space for such a long time. I didn't know what to do. And then, you know, this, the, 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 the behind, you know, whatever voice in my head was like therapy therapy you know and I did try and then I didn't try but I couldn't find what I needed until now and it's like that's divine intervention fam like it it's been such a journey that's been beautiful not easy because I had to I had to come in here and be like you have to be real I told myself you have to come into this real I used to fake the funk before but I was like plus she was the therapist would not let me play the bullshit she watches everything on your face my eye twitched a little bit like this. She like, what was that about? <laughs> <laughs> she be on point because yeah, I'll be in my head going, I ain't doing it. And she'd be like, what's that about? And I'm sitting there like, shit, I can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's been such a, so, so amazing, such a blessing. And I talked about it a little bit more, um, again, in the episode therapy is life. So definitely tune into that. If you want to hear some more, um, and feel free y'all to reach out. This is a side note, but reach out to me via the email, AJ's Oasis at gmail.com. Hit me up on IG, DM me. If you really want some help trying to find a therapist, like I really will help you because I think it's essential. I think it's something, whether you think you've got it together or not, whether you think life is amazing or not, whether life is good or bad, I think you should still go to therapy. You know what I mean? Still find someone to talk to. They'll give you insight. So if life is good, shit, they can make that shit great. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I and if you really need assistance, hit hit me up. I'll hit you up. That's what I do on my day job. So it's not, it's nothing to me. And I definitely don't mind um assisting. And again, I tell everybody I know, everybody I love. That <laughs> therapy. Go to therapy. Therapy. You don't want to talk about that? Therapy. Like, I'm always telling you want to go to therapy. <laughs> So it's something I believe in because I'm doing it. So I know it's hard, child. I know it's hard, but I think it's so it's it's just worth it. All right, I'm done. I'm off my soapbox about therapy. My bad, y'all. Go ahead. No, 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 absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you know what? I listened to a motivational speaker, Dr. Eric Thomas, and he says if it was easy, everyone would do it. Mm-hmm. Um. So I mean, going back to that whole thing with therapy and you know working on yourself, um, and just trying to become the best highest version of you if it was easy everybody would do it but it's so essential to put that work in like so one of my little one of my little quotes that I uh, I was like I'm gonna eventually drop soon is the biggest and greatest project you will ever work on is you yes because that's what it is you know most times we spend like our very life existence trying to change our friends trying to change our man trying to change our mm-hmm. children how about you work on you and then let, let everybody else worry about themselves and what's yep. going to fall away. It's going to fall away. And what's going to stay, it's going to stay. Uh-huh. So yes, I'm a, 
I am a av- I am an advocate of therapy. I mean, especially because I literally had to work through a lot of stuff by myself. Um, <clears throat> and now that I'm actually in therapy, it helps me easily to identify, not to be shady, but broken men. You know, it's given me that perspective or people that are around me that are friends that are family that they're having certain issues it's made it a lot easier for me to identify why because I've already put in that work on my own self already Mm -hmm. so so I mean yeah absolutely yeah for sure for sure and I think the last thing for me that's been a revelation that's been a game during this time is I really feel like I found myself I thought I found me maybe like a year and a half, two years ago, but I feel like I'm really finding myself and I f- I'm finding, I have a, I'm still in the process, uh, but I've really found so many different layers of me and, and it feels good. Like it feels right. And that's what I've also gained um, a real deeper sense of my spirituality, my spiritual self. Um, and in doing that, I've just unlocked so many parts of myself that I'm just so happy. Like, I'm just, it just feels so good. Like, I, that's the only way I can really express it. Um, therapy has helped. Um, but also, you know, just doing some reading, really reaching out and, and embracing a lot of things. Um, you know, talking to God, praying, meditating, all this stuff has been so helpful. And for me, this is why 2020 ain't shitty. You know what I mean? Like, I found me. I ain't gonna say 2020 is shitty. Like, at this point in the game, I'm the most important thing to me right now. So it's like, I'm good. You know, like, uh, people, like, keep asking me, how you been? How you been? I'm like, yo, I'm great. They're like, for real? Yes. Yeah. Like, I mean it. Like, I am great because every day I find out something new about myself. Every day I just touch a different part of myself or just come to, when I say touch, like I touch it, but I've come to terms and peace with it. You know what I mean? Um, I'm learning to forgive myself. That's, that's the journey I'm on right now. Ooh. Learn to forgive myself. And that might be a whole nother podcast, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's so much freedom that comes with that too. You know, there's so much peace that comes with that. And I'm just happy that I have the opportunity to do any of this. And that's just where I've, that's kind of where I want to, yeah, that's pretty much the last piece of it for me. Like I found me and I have no regrets. If that's all I got this year, I, I'm good with that. Like I'm happy with all that, you know? Well, I mean, COVID has definitely given me a deeper appreciation for life. So, uh, um, yesterday, a friend from high school, I haven't spoken to her in, oh my goodness, like, we left high school 18 years ago and we just reconnected via Facebook and we were just talking about some of the day-to-day challenges that we've had during uh, quarantine. And one thing I said to her was, I've learned to practice a lot of gratitude. And she was like, hmm. I said, yeah. So before I get up in the morning, the first thing I say is thank you. So I tell my creator, thank you for allowing me to see another day, especially because um, there was a gentleman that I started working with about like almost a year ago and he passed away um, from COVID, mm. you know? And I mean, that was so heartbreaking because for me, I just took that moment to say, you know, that could have been me, you know, going to work every day, going to this office. And then I pass away a, a lot. We lost a lot of um, city employees in particular that were set to retire because of COVID. So now before I get off the bed, before I start complaining, before I check Facebook, before I check Instagram, before I check my text messages for the day, the first thing I say before I get off the bed is, thank you God for allowing me to see this day. Thank you that I'm healthy. Mm -hmm. Thank you my children are healthy. Thank you that none of us have COVID. Thank you that even if we did come into contact with it, we're not in a hospital with tubes running through our nose. Thank you for shelter. Some people are out on the street. Um, you know, just thank you. There's money in the bank account. Thank you that there's food in the fridge. And I literally just mentally just start going through a laundry list of things in my mind that I'm grateful for. 
Um, and even if I'm having a bump in the road during the day, if something happens at work, I just remind myself, I have a job, I have an income, I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. So doing that, also having a vision board, keeping goals and different things like that in front of me, I'm just in a grateful space. I, you know, I say, you know, God, I thank you for bringing my tribe to me. Thank you for bringing friends. Thank you for allowing people to love on me and tolerate me. I know sometimes I could be a pain. Mm -hmm. I could be a headache. Y'all are. <laughs> you know? Like, thank you to those people. Thank you to my friends. Thank you to the people that even when I feel invisible or I feel small that they're here just to like give me an encouraging word, you know, grateful that, you know, I've had children and they're healthy. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, like COVID has really taught me to just appreciate the little things we take for granted. Yep. Um, I have a family member that, you know, is losing their memory. I'm grateful that I'm in my right mind. That I can dress myself, that I can use the bathroom. And people take this as, you know, oh, you know, it's not that serious. Oh, no. When you no longer have the ability to do it, it becomes all the more serious. Yes. So, yes, I practice a lot of gratitude. Even before I go to bed, even if I don't do a prayer, I just sit there for an hour, reflect on the day. Yep. And I go through in my head what I'm grateful for. And I find what COVID has really done for me is I stop having this half empty mindset and now I have a half full mindset. Mm -hmm. So instead of me thinking and going to the worst, I'm like, okay, all right, well, if it works out, yes. If it doesn't work out, I'll be hurt for a couple of seconds, but I'm just going to take the lesson and move forward. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's been the beauty of COVID altogether. It's really made me appreciate not just the little things, but everything. Because we're here today and like like Black Panther, we're going tomorrow. Just just like that. You just know. Like that. Just like a, that. That's a where I think we're gonna end off right there, girl. <laughs> Preach a petty. Like Okay, I can't even top that. Like you got it, sis. Like <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. <laughs> Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of the Oasis Podcast. I hope you were able to find something that resonated with you on your journey. Don't forget to subscribe, share this episode, and like us on Instagram at the Oasis Podcast. If you have any questions or comments, direct message us on Instagram or email us at ajsoasis at gmail.com. Again, that's A A Y J A Y S. O-A-S-I-S -S at gmail.com.